Hello, welcome to REGARD, Regulatory Guidance for Academic Research of Drugs and Devices. We created this website um, as a platform to assist academic researchers who are new to the IND and IDE regulatory process, or those of you who may not have a regulatory affairs office to assist you with going to the FDA. So hopefully um, by now you've familiarized yourself with our website and you've determined that you do need an IND. So you're in luck. If you go to our resources tab, we have regulatory forms and templates that can help you complete an application um, that you can submit then to the FDA. So I thought I'd just spend um, a little bit of time here to just sort of talk you through the IND template and where you can find information if you're not sure what to put in each section. So our template will download as a Word document and it's not a protected document, you can fill it out. So keep in mind that um, every uh, investigation will be unique. We did our best to generate a generic form. All the sections may not apply to your particular study. So I'm just going to cruise down here through the forms. Again, we have links to the required forms. Uh, 1571 is the cover letter that will um, accompany all submissions, whether it's your initial submission or an amendment or a report, a safety report, you're going to complete the form 1571. It's, they have instructions on the FDA's website. We have links here within the template that can help you fill out this form. So we have put the uh, table of contents in the format that the FDA um, would like to see the submission. So we have our introduction um, where you give the name, all the names of the drug, the class of the drug, formula, structural formula if you can, if you can find it. Keep in mind that if you're using a drug that already has FDA approval, most of this information will be contained in the labeling and you can just reference the labeling that you can attach uh, to the appendix. And then keep all of the sections in your IND application and you can just reference or hyperlink, we prefer to use hyperlinks, within the document to where the information can be found. Makes it easy for the reviewer to navigate. So summary of previous human, ex human experience with the drug in the indication for which you're planning to use. So you don't need to give the FDA 170 references. Remember, everything that you submit to the FDA, they will review. I tell investigators to focus on the seminal papers or the most, uh, the most important papers that specifically uh, reference safety of the drug in the indication for which they want to use it. Now, there may not be any um, formal uh, peer-reviewed published literature. Perhaps you have experience because you've used this clinically. You would want to put that here in this section. If you know that the drug has been used or approved for use in other countries, put that here. And then the overview of the preclinical data. This will be all of your in vitro and animal studies in which you have used this drug for the indication that this IND submission uh, is in regards to. And again, the reference section, I encourage investigators to include the full PDF of all of the references. Remember, you're trying to provide the FDA reviewers with all of the information. If you only give them the PubMed uh, link, then you're assuming that they have access to the document, and they may not. So if they can't read the document, um, it could hold up your review of your IND. Finally, 
we come to a general investigational plan. This is just a high level overview followed by your rationale, how you came to um, this study design, plans for the first year, number of subjects to be evaluated, and please keep in mind that you need to provide strong statistical evidence or provide the FDA with the uh, statistical analysis that you plan to do and how you determined the number of subjects to be evaluated. The investigator brochure is the summary of all the studies that have been done using your drug product in the indication for which you plan to use it. If you're familiar with um, big pharma uh, drug studies, uh, investigator brochures are pretty standard. However, an investigator brochure is not necessary, meaning you, you don't need to submit this to the FDA for a sponsor investigator initiated IND when the study is at a single site. And we have information um, within the REGARD website and a, and a template on how to complete an investigator's brochure if you uh, are doing a study that involves multi-center. The proposed clinical research study protocol. I like to tell investigators to put this in a stepwise uh, table. This helps the reviewer understand who does what in a study um, with respect to how patients are going to be consented, how they're going to be prepped, um, how the drug is going to be administered, is it going to be something that they have to come into the clinic for, is it something that they're going to take home with them. All of this can be included in the study protocol. Informed consent, generally, um, your academic institution is going to have a, uh, an informed consent in the institution's format. And that's, of course, the one that you want to use. Investigator facilities, uh, investigator and facilities data, where is the study going to be done? And who are the investigators or clinicians who are going to be working with you on the study. So all of the investigators who are making a significant treatment decision need to complete the Form 1572. Now you can add investigators after you've gotten the IND. Just remember to submit the Form 1572. And that includes the investigator's CV, and their credentials. Disclosure of financial interests, this is pretty standard. Keep in mind that if you, if you submit a 3454 form, you also have to include a 3455. I won't discuss those here, but you can read more about them. And again, we have links to these forms on the REGARD site and here. Now, the Chemistry, Manufacturing, and Control Information, or CMC section. If you're using a drug that has already had FDA approval, again, you can refer to the package insert and labeling here. If this is a novel substance, then you need to provide all of the information listed. Keep in mind that all the raw materials that are included in the final product need to be noted, and you need to include certificates of analysis or certificate of conformance for all of those materials. You also need to make sure that you have a quality program, quality manufacturing, quality control, quality assurance, so that the drug product, if you are manufacturing it in-house, has some criteria before it's released to the clinic. Placebo products and environmental assessment. Uh, for environmental assessment, you just need to put this statement.
And then the pharmacology and toxicology information. This information is critical to the FDA's um, evaluation of safety of the material. Again, previous human experience, marketing experience, whether or not this product has been used in other clinical research, and references. Additional information can include um, your certificates for analysis, references, PDFs of references. Keep in mind that all of these sections, drug dependence, radioactive, pediatric, other, you need to maintain those in your document. They may not apply and you can just put not applicable. And finally, any other relevant information that you feel the FDA needs to evaluate the safety of this drug for your study. So we hope this has been helpful. And thanks for visiting Regard.